Marriage Supper of the Lamb and End Time Events Messages for this last generation dictated to Susan Davis from the Heart of God Copyright Copyright 2012 Susan Davis All Rights Reserved Item 13 9781477483322 Item 10 one billion four hundred and seventy seven million four hundred and seventy eight thousand three hundred and thirty seven notice you are encouraged to distribute copies of this document through any means electronic or in printed form you may post this material in whole or in part on your website or anywhere else but we do request that you include this notice so others may know they can copy and distribute as well this book is available as a free airbook and mp3 at the website HTTP endtimesprophecy.com copyright 2012 by Susan Davis note from the author this book was not created for the generation of profit but for the purpose of reaching more people through this particular medium but certainly not to raise money through the use of these prophetic words of the Lord the list price of this book was set to cover only printing costs and the royalty that goes to the author is near zero there may be a few cents per book due to fluctuating printing costs any remainder over zero is used to buy books which are given away for free these messages are so urgent and important that we want to ensure that the price of the book would not be an obstacle to people getting these messages. About these prophecies Susan operates in the gift of prophecy. In 1 Corinthians 14 to 1 it states, Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. Now we are living and supposed to be obeying God's instructions in the New Testament. Although some believe that spiritual gifts, such as prophecies, have been done away with, this is man's thinking and not God's. God has not changed his covenant. We are still living in the era of the new covenant, which is also called the New Testament. Please understand that your first commitment should be to the Lord Jesus Christ and his word as written in the Bible, especially the New Testament. As always, all prophecy needs to be tested against the Bible. However, if the prophecy lines up with the Bible then we are expected to obey it. Currently God does not use prophecies to introduce new doctrines. They are used to reinforce what God has already given to us in the Bible. God also uses them to give us individual warnings of future events that will affect us. Just like in the Old Testament, God uses prophets in the New Testament times of which we are currently in. The book of Acts, which is in the New Testament, mentions some of the prophets such as Judas and Silas Acts 15.32 and Agabus Acts 21.21 21 and there were others. The ministry of prophets is also mentioned in New Testament times in 1 Corinthians 12 28, 14 to 1, 29, 32, 37 as well as in Ephesians 2, 20, 3 to 5, 4, 11. Jesus chooses prophets to work for him on earth. Among other things, Jesus uses prophecies and prophets to communicate his desires to his children. The Bible itself was written prophetically through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Some people say words of prophecy are in danger of adding to the Bible or taking from it well the Bible speaks of prophecy as being a gift of the Holy Spirit. The way the Bible is added to or taken from is not through additional words of prophecy received by the people which the Holy Spirit gives words to, but by the changing of God's concepts to add new unbiblical concepts from other pagan beliefs for example. But the primary work of the prophets in the Bible has always been to focus the people back to God's word, the Bible. As it says in 1 Thessalonians 5-19-21, do not put out the Spirit's fire, do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. And the way to test the messages is to compare its content to what the Bible says. In all the prophecies below I personally Mike Pearl to book preparer have tested these messages and they are all in agreement to what the Bible says. But you must also test these messages, yourself, to the Bible. And if they are consistent with the Bible, then God expects that you will take them to heart and obey his instructions. Table of Contents Introduction by the Lord Testimonials 1 Humility 2 Do not trust in yourself or others 3 Training in Humility 4 Trusting in God 5 Forgiveness 6 Leaving the world, but do not be of the world 7 Rapture and Marriage Supper of the Lamb 8 Prepare for the Rapture 9 About the Lost Church 10 Lust for the World 11 The World is Heading for Trouble 12 my soon coming 13. The hour hastens my children 14. The world has turned against me 15. Leaders do not follow me 16. The hour of my return approaches 17. About the Antichrist 18. The time approaches for my soon descent 19. Make preparations 20. Your time is almost up 21. 
Apart from my will, you are running against me 22. Evil is coming to destroy the world 23. The clock is about to strike midnight 24. Stop fighting with each other 25. I will not take you if you have unrepentant sin 26. Stay focused on me 27. You must be made ready if you want to come out with me 28. Your eternity is in the balance 29. You must run, not walk to me now 30. My bride is lovely in all her ways 31. Very few worship me and repent to me 32. I am about to remove my bride to safety 33. I want first place or no place 34. There is tribulation coming great tribulation 35. There is absolutely no benefit in chasing after a dying world 36. Many who think themselves ready are fooling themselves 37. You have precious little time remaining 38. My true followers are watching they are on guard 39. My testimony, regarding this document and my fasting introduction by the Lord my children, this is your Lord speaking. I am coming very soon. My coming is near, even at the door. I am coming. You need to make ready. This journal was completed during a 40-day fast by my daughter Susan. She did this fast at my request. I brought her to a secluded location so that she might die to herself. During this time, I gave her many words that I wanted to go out to my children. So she wrote my words as I laid her. All these letters have important information you need to read and consider, as my coming is near. This is your Lord and Savior, Yeshua Jesus Christ. All scripture included comes from the King James Version Bible. These words were dictated by God the Father and His Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ or Jesus the Anointed or Jesus the Messiah to Susan during a four-tie-day fast recorder between January 27, 2012 through March 6, 2012. Testimonials I thank you so much for your emails and sharing God's words and it blessed me so much. I prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to guide me to make me understand many things and to walk in His way. Please pray for me also. Once again thank you so much and God bless you and your ministry. Reader 1 Dear, dear sister Susan, thank you Yushwa for these letters and what you asked your daughter bride to go through so they could be written. I began the day after and read about 10 pages each time. I am blessed. Reader 2 Susan, thank you so much for the link you shared. It is absolutely bless me and I feel my spirit so hungry to the Lord Yushwa. Reader 3 Hello my dear sister Susan, I am almost finished reading God's messages letters to you during your fast. They are truly his words. I mean I just cannot put that 100 page document down. His truth, wisdom, and pleading with us is amazing. He is just so humble and loving to be able to encourage, warn the nations. I thank him for it, and bless you for sharing it with me. Reader 4 Dear Susan, thank you, my dear sister, for sending this to me. I posted it, and I am already halfway through. It brought me to my knees before the Lord. I pray that millions will do the same. May God bless you for your obedience and faithfulness to Him. Love forever in our Messiah. Dash Reader 5 Susan, this is an extremely anointed prophecy from the Lord. I have heard prophecies from the time I was a baby Christian back in 1979. I have heard and read some very anointed prophecies over the past 33 years and the messages in this book are of the most anointed I have heard and read in all my life. Mike Perlter Book Preparer Chapter 1 Humility Humility is humble submission. It is a willingness to serve others without complaint, to overlook harm from others with a smile and forgiveness. It is a desire to serve others and to please God. It is a desire to serve God at all times with hopeful expectations, to be compliant, a willing spirit always ready to serve God and others. Humility is also willing to take a back seat the last chair, the furthest position, to be in the background, to be unnoticed. Luke 14 to 712 And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden, when he marked how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honourable man than thou be bidden of him, and he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher, then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. 
for whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Matthew 19.30 But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. It is the person who is forgotten because they are so lowly, they blend into the scenery. They do not want center stage. They want to be hidden away, quiet, unassuming, submissive to God. This is humility, doubter and this is my bride. She is all these things. Do you see your errors now daughter? Let us continue. What is being humble? It is working behind the scenes but not desiring the limelight. It is complete submission to God. It is seeking to obey God in all things. Humility is not worrying about what other people think of you. It is doing for others without receiving credit. It is desiring favor from God and not men. It is growing in favor with God and pleasing God. It is quiet and unassuming. It is growing in God. It is being Christ-like. Humility is most beautiful to God. A humble, geode fearing person shines in God's eyes. Humility is wanting to please God and walk in His path. To be lowly and not think well of yourself and to not think yourself better than others, to consider yourself below others, and to not judge those around you. I am the only one to judge. It does not mean you are to be abased. It means you are to respect others' feelings even if they stumble and not to belittle them in your heart, to have compassion for them because you too are not beyond sinning before a holy God. This is what happens when someone is humble. They create a wonderful testimony. They shine in my kingdom, in my eyes. They receive the ear of God. I listen to my humble servants when they cry out to me. I would go to any extreme to save my humble servants. I will move heaven and earth for my humble servants. Do you understand this, my daughter? My humble servants are devoted to me. They understand that they cannot do anything without me. They are always seeking me in all ways like a child seeks its parent. This is my humble servant. They have no self-will. They trust only me in their daily walk. They search me for their answers. They trust me wholeheartedly and I answer them. I give them my best because they seek me above all others for answers. They are humble and glorious in my sight. They have a soft-spoken beauty about them. They are not like the world around them. They stand out from the crowd. Their beauty is geode-like and heavenly. This is how heaven is full of people secure in their God because I meet all their needs. There is no need to be brash or rude, arrogant or prideful. All their needs are met through me. They are content, willing to serve, and happy to serve because I fulfill all their needs, all the time. No one vies for attention in my heavenlies. Everyone is content. It is a place of purity, peace, calm, love, laughter, joy. Childlike faith is important because a child does not get ahead of itself. A child follows close behind its parent because it trusts the parent. It clings to the parent with hopeful expectation waiting for instruction, guidance, leadership. The child does not assume the role of parent. It knows better. It cannot lead, it trusts only the parent to meet all of its needs. When the child gets out of sight of the parent, panic sets in because it knows all its needs are met in the parent it has grown to love and trust. This is the relationship between the truly humble and God. The humble follow God blindly out of trust and obedience and God delivers them. There are not answers anywhere else. God is supreme and the only true hope, reliable hope. Children seek their parents for all their needs. They cry after them because their parents can deliver them just as God delivers the humble who follow him from a humble, pure heart. Is this making sense to you now daughter? Can a person full of pride change their ways and become humble? Daughter, the answer is yes by the guidance and submission to me, your God. So with God all things are possible. Yes, all things are possible with me. Proverbs 15.33 The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Let us begin. Humility is about love. Love comes from a heart of humility. Love does not come from pride. Pride destroys love. Pride says, I am better than you, I know more than you, you are worth less than me, you are valueless to me, I am self-sufficient, and I do not need you. This is what pride stands for, my child. Pride is ugly in all forms. It is self-seeking, self-centered, selfish 
and its roots are evil. Vainglory rises up against God and says, I don't need God. I am my own God, I rule myself. It is ugly and abominable. There is no beauty in this. There is nothing redeeming in this. It puts others off. It causes people to feel inferior, rejected, unloved, offended, hurt. There is nothing remotely geode-like in pride and it is the opposite of the characteristic of Christ. There is nothing Christ-like in pride. Nothing good comes from pride only evil. Do you understand, my child? How can we flee from the appearance of pride, Lord? Doubter, you must run from pride, run far from it. Seek humility at all times. Doubter, there is no need to build yourself up to seek the attention of others if you have my love and affection. Seek my love and affection and be satisfied in it only and all desires to seek love from those around you will be eclipsed by my all-consuming love. The people around you cannot gratify your deepest needs only I can do this for you. Only I can satisfy the hungry, longing, empty heart. I have all the answers for the longing, empty heart. I can fill all longings. Men cannot. They are not capable although it appears that way. There is only short-lived and brief gratification from the approval of others. I am the wellspring that fills to completion. I fill and satisfy all the longings of the human heart. Come to me to satisfy your need for love and affection. Lay down pride. It is a destructive force and has no love. It operates outside of love and only brings destruction to everyone. Pride is the first evil. Still it rules and reigns in men's hearts. Pride causes men to seek after all ways contrary to seeking God. Men build themselves up by position in their work, talents, wealth, possessions, and relationships with others. These are idols and they do not set their sights on God for their answers, only to build themselves up through pursuits that I do not ordain, so that they can appear successful to those around them. Only the humble-hearted pursue God for their answers and needs and put aside their desire to pursue the things to impress those around them. When you try to amass wealth or make a name for yourself in the world even through ministry work, it is you striving to be accepted by others, to seek approval from those around you. This is not my will. It cannot be. My humble children seek me for their needs daily and I deliver them. This is how I teach trust for God. When my children strive in their own power and succeed, they are failing because I will not reward those who are out of my will although things look well and good, it is false security. And I also allow my children to fail in their striving so they see they need me. I need to be the desire of the heart and the answer to everything. Everything else is false hope, leading my children out of my will. Yes these are prideful children seeking their own way apart from consulting me and knowing and trusting me. This leads to inferior satisfaction. Strive and strive, my children strive and only come up empty longing for more, never really satiated always wanting more, but not knowing what. I am that what? I am the only way to true satisfaction, to a whole heart, whole spirit, whole soul. I satisfy, I complete, I make whole, I fill the voids of the human heart's longings, nothing or no one else. This is the basis of pride and the sin that stems from it, a never seeking heart looking for gratification and approval in everything but God. Empty, lonely, and unfulfilled is the ultimate outcome, a sad existence that I never meant for my creation. Pride. An ugly sin that is completely devoid of love in any form, a loveless position holds no love for anyone. Humility by contrast loves. It is not self-serving. It does not rule over others. It waits for others to be served first. It holds others in higher esteem than itself. It does not take advantage. It is not rude or arrogant. It is not haughty. It does not put on airs. It does not flaunt. It is beautiful, soft-spoken, sweet-natured, loving, caring, geode-like, Christ-like, geode-seeking. It does not rule over others or force its position. It is only concerned for the positions of others. This is humility, always in the background, never vying for first chair. This is my way patient and resilient. Humility is a form of love. It does not impose itself on others. It waits its turn. It loves above all else. It does not seek to abase others to be lifted up. It only seeks good for those around. Why is humility a beautiful thing to me, God? I am pleased when my children humble themselves before me. 
it is a show of honor, respect, and trust in me, their God. They put all their hopes and expectations on me to fulfill all their needs. They remove their desire to seek themselves for answers through their own accomplishments, their own strength, their own self-seeking will. They are not inclined to follow their own heart, abandon me, their God, focus on their own selfish pursuits which leads them away from the one true way, me, their God. I am the only way, truth, path. Many are deceived by pursuing their own ways apart from coming close to me and seeking my will, my truth, and my direction for their life. They pursue what the world says is right, seeking money, position, fame, and satisfaction in a myriad of ways apart from me, God. This is high-class deception. I am not saying that you should not work or live life, but I am saying to seek me first and I can direct the right path to take as you live in this world. If you pursue your plans and dreams apart from my intervention then you are running outside of my will and you leave yourself open to my enemy and you are living in sin because you are not in my will. This is pride and rebellion. Many walk in it. Proverbs 18.12 Before destruction the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Proverbs 29 hours 23 minutes A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Matthew 23 12 And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that humble himself shall be exalted. James 4 to 6 But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Proverbs 8 13 The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. How does one stay in your will, Lord? This is how to stay in my will, submit yourself to me complete surrender. Then I guide your steps. This is daily. Coming to me each day and asking for direction, guidance, like a child. This is childlike faith. The world has painted a picture that being self-sufficient is the way to a successful life. It is a well-plotted plan of deception from my enemy. He has deceived the world with this lie. My children pursue life through their own, thought-out planning and schemes never once consulting me, their maker and they believe all is well. If it looks right, it must be right. But it is evil meant to throw my children off the narrow path. Only I have the right course, the right way for my children to walk in and this course I give them each day. John 5.30 I can of my no wn self do nothing, as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my no wn will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. If people have to live in this world sometime they are forced to plan ahead, what about that? My child, yes my children live in the world, but I even can give direction about the choices made for the future. If my children seek me, sometimes the answer is, be still and wait. Only my children, who are intentionally close to me, walk with me daily, will be given this insight. When my children are far from me and only come to me occasionally, this I will not bless. I am not a god who you can check in with every now and then, as so many children believe. Many come to me during their crisis and then they go back to forgetting me. These children do not know me. I am a god who desires intimacy, closeness with my children. This is evil to me. Lukewarm, to which I spit out. Luke 7 to 2123. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Chapter 2 Do not trust yourself or others now daughter, let you as begin. Today, I want to discuss with you about the problem with trusting in self. Being self-sufficient, self-reliant and self-centered is an evil vice. It is promoted by the world system and fostered by my enemy. Being self-reliant is nothing more than putting self before God. It is walking in your own will apart from my will. Just like this 40-day fast is my will, when people do what they choose without seeking me through an intimate relationship with me, they run apart from my will and they are living in sin it is rebellion to me. I want my children to walk in my will. Sometimes my will does not look right according to the standards of the world. The world says chase money, possessions, security, human love. My will doesn't match what the world calls normal. It looks different. But my will is correct. 
I created humans and I also created them to trust me and walk in my will to know my will you must lay down your life before me in humble submission and seek me daily. Those who truly pursue me by devoting time to me, intimate time with me in the secret place and reading my word will find me and my will. This requires choices. You must choose because worldly distractions can throw you off my straight and narrow path. Oh there are many other paths to go on but all lead to destruction as the road to hell is a broad road that many fall into. Few find this important narrow path to me and eternal life. Many think they walk the narrow path but they are deceived. They listen to others who are also deceived. Many of my leaders are deceived and deceiving others because they believe doing many works and staying busy in my churches is the way to eternal security but this is deception. It is only by intimacy, truly knowing me, spending time, devoting time to knowing me. This is the key to eternal safety and security. Psalms 91 to 1 He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty the body is fed in the churches but this body cannot truly function correctly apart from nourishment which I give in the secret place and in the time spent getting to know me in a deep way. This is where the body is truly built up. This is where I deliver my willing words to my sheep and sustain them to survive what the enemy tries to do to cause trouble. It is by intimacy with me that you can sustain through the pitfalls and trials of life. If you go it alone you will struggle and ultimately fail because you do not know what I require apart from me and I am the ultimate judge of all in the end. How can you prepare to face me in judgment if you have never come close to me and learned what I desire and require of you? When you face me without this intimacy you will be empty-handed because you have relied on your own beliefs, own thinking, own will, and you will fall greatly short. You will miss the mark. Romans 14:12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Don't be deceived. Many of my so-called leaders never spend time with me, and they too do not operate in my will, and they are as if the blind leading the blind down blind alleys of destruction. Many will be surprised how misled they have been because they have trusted in those who know me not and they themselves are greatly deceived. You cannot trust in what looks right in the world. You must submit to me. Surrender your all to me and seek me wholeheartedly. This is what I require. My word speaks this truth. Read it correctly and see for yourself. My leaders, too many like the world and its ways, so they change the meaning of my words so they can feel good about mingling with the world. The world is an enmity to me. Read my word. This truth is not hidden. You cannot love the world and me both. I have been clear about this. Oh yes you are in the world, but you must follow me and my ways while you are in the world. James 4-4 Ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. There are distractions at every turn that will lead you away from seeking intimacy with me. You must desire to spend time with me more than the world's distractions. You are settling for an inferior, empty pursuit if you settle for the things of the world over a relationship with the creator of all life your maker, maker of the stars, and the heavens. Hebrews 10 to 3839 Now the just shall all live by faith, but if any man draws back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Do not trade down a glorious eternal walk with me, the creator and sustainer of all life for the cheap thrills offered by the world. What you pursue in the world is empty satisfaction and ultimately death. You choose your own destiny, you believe you create your own path. You believe I bless your decisions. You have not come to know me intimately. If you did, you would learn differently. You are deceived by the ways of the world and my cunning enemy. He would have you do what you believe best for yourself apart from me. This I cannot bless. Then my children wonder why they run into so many troubles. The worst deception of my enemy is the belief that all is well when you run apart from having an intimate relationship with me. This is the greatest deception of all. All seems well, but when you face me, I will tell you to depart you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Matthew 7 21 Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 
Yes, this is my word. I did not create you to walk apart from me and for you to seek your own way without ever consulting me. Yes, you can do these things because you have free will, but you are not in my will and so you are sinning against me. I give my children free will and they can choose to seek me in intimacy and trust my guide and so they can run apart from me. When my children run apart from me, out of my will, seeking their own plans, they work against my kingdom plans and this is evil. They cause destruction they don't even know about, because they have selfishly believed can live their life outside of my perfect will and plans. They bring trouble on themselves and others. They leave themselves open the whims and traps of the enemy. Children apart from me, you are no match to the wiles and conning of my enemy. Do not think yourself so wise. You are useless apart from me. Why do I talk so of those with childlike faith as the ones who will inherit my kingdom? Because these children recognize their need for me at every turn just as a child turns to its parent at every moment. The child knows apart from the parent he is in danger as my children recognize apart from me, they too are in great danger, and trust in my every word. This is why I implore my children to spend time in my word, where much information is imparted. All answers for living this life are given in my book. I gave this book as a guide for mankind. My spirit reveals truth in the pages. Only through surrender and receiving my spirit in full measure will you receive the enlightenment that you need to truly understand my words. It is not by the teachings of men, but by my spirit that the words grow in your heart. Only by my spirit can you receive the light-giving life of my book. Matthew 18-4 Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. 1 Corinthians 2-1114 to For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The world is full of deception now. Don't be fooled by the evil propagated by my enemy. He would have you believe by the messages you receive daily that you can trust the things of the world. You trust in everything but me, the giver of life. You trust in money, education, worldly security, governments it is false help and security. This is high-class deception and it leads my children away from me. My children then dabble in trusting me. They turn to me a little and then rely on everything else. This is not intimacy. Yes, you are intimate with the world and your own desires, but not with me. You need to come to me and lay everything down before me. You cannot truly know me until you put aside your worldly security and come to me seeking an intimate relationship. Anything else apart from this relationship is lukewarm and I will not honor a lukewarm relationship. So many will be surprised when they face me and discover that dancing with the world and also spending a little time with me will keep them out of my kingdom. There will be many surprised. Revelation 3.16 So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. What do I want and expect from my children? I want their life. I want it all in complete surrender. A dance with the world and a dance with me is evil. Read my word. Oh so many read my book and they take from it what they want so they can placate themselves, so they can enjoy the world and still feel that they can enter my kingdom when their life ends. What a shock to those who discover that I only receive those who have given me their or sacrificed their all. Their pursuit of wealth, fame, possessions was all in vain and ultimately keeps them outside my kingdom. Their own will and future planning has led them on a path outside of my will and apart from my true plans for their life a life I created. The life I gave them and sustain. Oh yes no one lives and breathes from day to day except I ordain it. This is why my children should not be so sure of their own selfish planning apart from my will and true intentions for their life. I can take any life I choose at will. No one lives outside my decisions for their life. I give, I take as I see fit, as I desire. This is why it is pure foolishness when men create their own plans and make their own way apart from my will for their life. It is the height of pride and foolishness and it is evil. It is the way of my enemy to lead my sheep astray down paths of destruction by what looks so normal and right. It is the enemy's deceptive plan to deceive many. 
Job 12.10 In whose hand is the soul of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind. Psalms 104 hours 29 minutes Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled, thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Chapter 3 Training in Humility Daughter I am ready to give you words. Listen closely as I speak. Now I want to go over new information. I want to talk about training in the way of being humble. This is the way of the humble. A quiet, still heart are my humble ones. They walk quietly never looking for position or privilege. They seek me in all ways. They are ever seeking their God. They do not want to be center focus. They do not want to seek attention for themselves or recognition. They only desire to be loved and cared for by me, their God. They trust me and I care for them. I meet their expectations. I deliver their needs. I bring them all the things they require to live by. I am their rock. I am ever faithful to my humble servants. I bring them peace and calm in every storm. I am always at their side, ever abiding, always willing to serve them. I love my humble servants. They are a beautiful fragrance to me. I love them and they love me. We are inseparable. I am their heir. They shine bright as stars. They do not seek the ways of the world. I keep them content. The world holds no sway over them. They seek me for contentment and I bring them what they desire. They are never disappointed. Very few walk this path. Very few find it. The ones, who do, find the road to my kingdom everlasting. 1 Peter 5-6 to Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. My humble servants always listen for my voice. They move when I ask them to and they serve when I need them to with a glad heart. They love to serve in my kingdom. They are content serving their king and I bring them joy and peace. My love flows over them. They never lack. To be humble, you must consider yourself in last place, never needing first place. It is wisdom to be last not first. The fools seek first place. My humble servants are wise and know what pleases me, their God. My children are the humble, the ones the world never notices or sees, hidden away out of the view of the worldly. They are of no account in this world, but in my kingdom, they are the rulers and reigners. They are exalted in my heavenly realm. I honor my humble ones. They sit with me on my heavenly throne and enjoy my presence. The humble who make themselves last in this life enjoy position in my kingdom. They are lifted up and held in esteem for their life of submission on earth. These ones bring me joy and I give them peace, everlasting peace. Mark 10.31 But many that are first shall be last, and the last first. I walk with the humble and make myself known to them. This is my gift for their sacrifice. What a sweet smell their love for me is and I will honor them. Humble is the way of the kingdom of God. Everyone in my kingdom is filled with humility. Pride cannot enter in. It has no place in my kingdom, only peaceful submission to me, God. This is my kingdom, full of quiet humility where everyone is satisfied with the love and beauty that overflows. There is no one who is dissatisfied with their life in heaven. Only hope and peace abounds. This world overflows with love. 1 John 2.16 for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Chapter 4 Trusting in God Let us begin my daughter February 7, 2012 Today my child we are going to cover new ground, I want to talk about trusting in God. My children do not trust me. They say that they trust, but their hearts are far from me. They trust in themselves. This is evil. They trust in the world and the things of the world. They do not walk my path because they do not trust it. If they trusted me, they would walk in my path, my will, my perfect ways. They seek other directions to go in. They move in other directions. They seek the world for all their answers through money, fame, possessions, security, romance, entertainment. Everything, but me, their God. They are living a lie when they say they trust me and they seek answers from the world. Lies, it is all lies. Trust in God, 
They say but then they never surrender their lives over to me wholly and they continue to cling to the world for their answers, they live a lie and they don't even see it. Yes, I bless my children with abundance. I make it rain and shine on the righteous and the wicked alike. But my children cannot say they trust me and still continue to commit adultery against me with the world. This is an abomination. I desire children who lay down their lives before me in complete surrender and put all their trust in me laying aside their future plans and trusting in my perfect will for their lives. They do not need to strive and struggle and worry about tomorrow if they are in my will. Can I not care for the sparrow? How much more do I care for my children who give me their all and sincerely trust me? Matthew 5 to 4445 But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Psalm 4-5 Offer the sacrifice of righteousness, and put your trust in the Lord. I am a God who can be trusted. There is no other rock. All else is sinking sand. I am the God of the ages, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. I can be trusted. Why waste time and worry on your own plans? No one even knows what the next hour will hold. Your plans can blow away in a single moment. Why do you cling to them so as if they will save you, as if they are reliable? It is idol worship for sure. Matthew 7 26 And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and do eat them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. Stop clinging to your imperfect plans. Give me your life in full surrender. Only I know the future, your future. Only I know what you will be doing tomorrow. Your own hopes and dreams outside of my will for your life will lead you to destruction because only those in my will by full surrender are safe, truly safe. All others are walking apart from my will in their own rebellious will and therefore cannot move forward in safety or security. This is serious, my children. Awaken and stop trusting in your own rebellious ways and trust in your God. Only I know the way to the narrow path. Don't be misled thinking you can find this path apart from me. That is foolishness. Few find this path because few stop clinging to their own ways. They think their ways are best because everyone around them is following this way, but the road to hell is broad. Don't trust the many around you who are misled. Can you not see this? What do you not understand about this, my children? Matthew 7 to 1314 Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few are that find it. So trust me. I can be trusted. My words never fail. Read my book. I deliver those who truly want to be delivered. I am a God who delivers those who submit to me in humility and brokenness. So come and be delivered and learn to trust your God. Chapter 5 Forgiveness Let US Begin Again February 7, 2012 Now I want to talk about forgiveness. Children, I want to speak to you about this matter of forgiveness. My children are unforgiving in their hearts storing up grievances against each other. I cannot forgive those who don't forgive. Is this clear? How can I forgive you, if you, yourself cannot forgive those around you? Does not my word speak of this? Forgiveness is love. Unforgiveness leads to all kinds of sin, bitterness, revenge, wrongful judging, and on and on. It gives a foothold to the enemy to come in and destroy you. This keeps you from closeness, intimacy with me, your God, and keeps you from receiving my spirit. This is serious. Matthew 6.14 for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. If you are unforgiving, you cannot be ready for my soon return. This will hold you back. It separates us. Leave this unforgiveness behind. Forgive each other. Lay down your anger towards each other. What do you gain when you harbor anger towards someone else? You suffer more than the person you are angry with, can you not see this? Is your eternal salvation worth harboring anger toward another? Mark 11.25 And when they stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, 
that your Father is also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. You must search your heart and ask this question. What is worth losing your eternal soul over? A petty dispute? Forgive and walk away and feel a dark cloud lift. Even if the other person won't forgive you, pray for them, yes pray for your enemies. Pray for them with a sincere heart and I will warm your heart to those who harm you. I will give you a heart of flesh. How can you expect those who do not walk in my way and those who do not possess my Holy Spirit to treat you as if they do? You must render patience, kindness, long-suffering to those who do not know me. It is impossible for those who do not know me, truly know me, to behave as if they do. Can you not see this? You cannot expect this from those who walk apart from me. Matthew 5 to 4445 But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. The world thinks it can run apart from its God. It fools itself. Only I hold everything together. Only I bring the right way to live, to men. This world, that shuns me, lives under false direction and evil deception. It all has become so evil. There is no truth, only compromise and deceit. Apart from my perfect ways, mankind lives under deception and corruption. Nothing or no one can be trusted. Only my bride, who remains in the earth and walks in my perfect will, is on the straight path. Only she is stable and true. All others walk the unreliable path of evil, unstable in all its ways. Soon the bride will be removed and the world will lose all its light. Darkness will be all-consuming. This day approaches. Forgiveness, the key to making your way back to me. Forgive everyone. There is no unforgiveness worth losing your very soul for. Luke 6 37 Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Doubter, this is your Lord speaking. Let you as begin, now I want to offer instruction in living with others. Too many have disregard for each other little patience, little respect. This is all leading to strife. It leads to discontent, hurt feelings. My children are selfish. They want to be first in all things. They are very insensitive to the needs of others, they fall short in caring for others. This leads to arguments, anger. Children I am saddened by this, but the crux of the problem stems from self-centeredness. This comes from a lack of humility. Proverbs 15.33 The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. Only from a humble heart will you be able to live among each other successfully. You must lay down your desires and give so those around you remain content. This requires taking a back seat to all those around you. This is the way of the humble. This produces fruit, peace, contentment, pleasant environment. Few learn to live like this. Few find this truth. But it is the way of peace, my way. I give these rules for life so that my children can live in peace and contentment, yet they choose their own way and ultimately have strife and much discontent. When will they learn my road is the best road to travel? I know everything. I know how my children can best live together. I give rules and precepts to guide my children into homes of peaceful dwelling and contentment. This, of course, requires that my children lay down their ways and desires and follow my rules. Psalms 34 hours 14 minutes Depart from evil, and do good, seek peace, and pursue it. Selfish choices lead to unhappy homes. Let me rule over your home. Let me reign in your hearts. My way is calm, peace, love. I will bring your home into the happy dwelling I meant for my children. Submit your hearts to me willingly and I will rain down tranquility. Your household will exude quiet assurance, love, and peaceful living. Walk in paths of quiet contentment, humility, and caring for others' feelings bring fruit of satisfaction. Let me rule over your household and I will deliver a home of gladness and joy. Psalms 37 hours 11 minutes but the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Chapter 6 Live in the world, but do not be of the world let you heirs begin. Today, I want to talk about living in the world. My children live in the world, 
but do not need to be of the world. The world is an enmity to me. I am disgusted with its overwhelming evil. Children, you can walk among those of the world without partaking of the things of the world. The world will lead you down paths of destruction and heartache. James 4-4 Ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. I am your only source of wholeness, peace, and calm. Do not turn to the world for direction. You will only be misled. You must turn to me for direction. Cling to me in this vital hour. I hold all your answers. I want to spare you sadness and grief. But you must turn your life over to me in completion only then can I take it and deliver you. You can walk safely in the world and not be affected by its laws but you need me to walk by your side. I can lead you through the endless distractions the world puts out to lead you astray and pull you away from me. I want you to focus on me. Keep your eyes fixed on me, your saviour. I am your daughter's safety. All other doors lead to destruction. Don't be deceived and take your eyes off of me. I offer hope in a world that offers none. Oh it appears to be hopeful, but what looks normal is deceiving. Psalms 25 hours 15 minutes. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. These are the last hours. The world is in the end times. The world seems so convincingly normal, but all is not so it is leading to the path of destruction. Soon many will find this out too late. Open your eyes. The world offers only false hope. Let me lead you. Surrender your life to me. I will open your eyes with my Holy Spirit and you will be renewed and see things the way they really are and then you will see the truth. Only my Holy Spirit can open your spiritual eyes that so deceive you about the ways of the world. I am ready to give you the spiritual eyes salve to help this transformation take place. You have but to ask me for it. Surrender your life, heart, soul, spirit and let me give you the sight you need to navigate safely through the world. Revelation 3.18 I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Chapter 7 Rapture and Marriage Supper of the Lamb Let you as begin. These words are for whoever will receive them. Today I am going to talk about the coming rapture, the removal of the bride my church. This moment arrives quickly. Many children are not ready. They fight me and cling to the world. They want to walk in the ways of the world. They rush to and fro and pay no heed to the warnings I am giving. Soon the warnings will be done and I must come and the bride will be removed. She will be taken out of the picture. Daniel 12-4 But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Her identity is unknown to the world. She is well hidden. I have her cloistered away in safe keeping. My light shines through her, the last remaining light on earth. Time is short and soon this light will go out. My sent ones will leave to their heavenly home safe from the tyranny on earth. This rapture event will be a large event, the removal of my ready children. No such event will ever be like it in human history. There will never be anything like it before or after. It is the greatest exodus of all time. My children will depart in a moment and receive new glorified bodies. These bodies will be resilient and eternal. They will follow after the pattern of the glorified body I possess. I am the first fruit of many others. These children will experience a life they have never known before, a glorious life, life everlasting. 1 Corinthians 15 to 5154 51 Behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed, 52 in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immorality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immorality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. There will be many wonderful things ahead for my raptured children. Let me give you a peek, when my children arrive, they will be greeted by their loved ones, family and friends already in the heavenlies. I will be looking on. This is a moment of great glory. 
What a gift to be reunited with family long missed. Then my children will be ushered to the great marriage supper of the Lamb. I will preside over this event. Revelation 19-9 And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. The table will be lavishly prepared, every accoutrement will be provided. The details of this event will be astounding. My children will be seated in front of a place setting with their name lettered in pure gold. Each place setting will have golden utensils embedded with jewels. There will be solid gold plates also studded with jewels. The tablecloth will be of pure silk spun with golden threads. Light will shine through the weave. The cups will be gold with jewels around the rim. Each place setting will have a gift especially for each child. The gift will be a precious reminder of my relationship with this child. It will be unique for each child. Each gift will have special meaning to each child of our long-lasting relationship. There will be many surprises at this event my marriage supper. Matthew 22-2 The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, each child will have an angel who waits on him. The food is prepared in my heavenly kitchens. Nothing will be amiss. All food items will be of heavenly proportions, food from earth that is recognized and food from heaven never seen before. Beauty unspeakable will be this table setting. My table will be full of light, candles of light, beautiful minerals. My children will wear robes of light. They will exude light as there will be no shadows. James 1 17 Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I will lead a toast to my bride. I will sing her praises that she is most beautiful to me. There will be dancing and music all around and making merry. The bride will see me in all my glory as I will be dazzling to the sight. My beauty will shine through and my love will flow out and overwhelm all attending. My father will be looking on in great delight as there will be much dancing and making merry. I will dance with my bride and we will be as one. My children will dance and make merry. All hearts will be glad. No one will be sad. This will be a great hour of glory and love. Doves will fill the air. They will fly in beautiful patterns and formations spelling out beautiful messages for my bride. She will be in awe. I will present my bride with a ring. Our names will be written on this ring. Flowers will be everywhere of all colors, new colors and old colors. Fragrance will fill the air, beautiful fragrances. My children will be lost in the ecstasy of it all. Luke 15 22. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put the ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet, my angels will fill the skies with dancing, singing, and music making. Heavenly instruments will play beautiful music. The stars will cry out celebrating the Lamb and his bride. Job 38 colon 67 6 Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? 7 When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. All the heavenly hosts will gather and sing praises over the Lamb's great nuptials. Everyone will sing praise to the King, his bride cometh. She has made herself ready. Let the joy begin. Revelation 19-7 Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. The Lamb W.H.O. taketh away the sin of the world unite with his beloved in holy matrimony. Great is his name. Praise his holy name among all the heavenlies for he is betrothed to his beloved and he has won her heart. John 1 29 The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. My children will also be shown their mansions, O daughter the beauty, the splendor. I has not seen or ear has not heard what waits my glorious bride who loves me. 1 Corinthians 2 9 But as it is written, I have not seen not ye heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath the prepared for them that love him. Data, these mansions will be more delightful than anything earth has to offer. Nothing can compare to the magnificence of what my bride has in store for her. These homes will suit the taste and interests of each child. No two mansions are alike. Each one is different from the other. John 14 23 In my father's house are many mansions, if it were not so. I would have told you. 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, the ye may be also. My children will be flabbergasted at what they will discover in each mansion. All have details they will delight and enthrall its owner. There is nothing on earth to describe the ornamentation and beauty of each of these incredible homes. All the interiors have unique surprises. These mansions are living. They take my children to and from wonderful places for my children to enjoy and experience. We will share in these adventures together. We will laugh and explore. The excitement will never end. There will be gardens and pleasures all throughout. Music will fill the air and lovely fragrances. Each home will be filled with love and laughter. Loneliness will never be a problem in heaven. I am always with my children making merry and enjoying each other's company. Psalms 36-8 They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of THY house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of THY pleasures. My love will surround their every move. Laughter, love, and joy are the rewards of these eternal homes, joy unspeakable, everlasting delight. This is only a taste of the things to come. My children do not have any comprehension of what awaits them. There is no way to accurately paint a picture of what awaits with what exists on earth. Only witnessing it in person will give its true description. So my children come and enjoy heavenly delights in the everlasting kingdom with homes especially prepared with loving care for my bride. Psalms 16:11. Thou wilt show me the path of life, in thy presence is fullness of joy, at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Chapter 8 Prepare for the rapture let you ears begin. Now daughter. The coming days before the rapture there is much to prepare. My children need to spend time with me in the secret place, quiet time, time to get to know me. I need their attention and company. I want to share my heart with them. I need a complete, full surrender of their hearts, lives, and attachments of the world. Psalms 91-1 He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. My children are attached to the world. They believe this world holds everything for them. This world is empty and cold-hearted. Each man for himself, no one really cares for anyone else. It has become a dog-eat-dog -dog world. Everyone is after what they can get from someone else for their own selfish purposes. It is a world of hopelessness and misery. And my children still yet cling to it believing that it still holds a bright future for them. They are mesmerized by the lost to promote their lost ways. My children need to pull away from this nonsense and come back to the living God, their maker, WHO holds all the answers to this life and the next. I am the great God of all living and breathing spirits. I possess the keys to life everlasting. Surrender to me your all before I make my great entry to the earth, collect my bride, step aside, and allow the earth to receive its just due. Job 12.10 in whose hand is the soul of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind. This is about to take place. Surrender is required to be among my bride, my rescued children. There is no exception. Surrender in full allows my spirit to come into your spirit and to renew it and clean your heart with the covering of my blood ransom and the enlightenment provided through my word. This is all necessary to deliver your soul, to be cleansed spotless, wrinkle-free, made white, and ready for your removal to safekeeping. If you doubt this, read my word. Ephesians 5 to 2527 25 Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, 26 that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, 27 that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot, or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Pray for this Holy Spirit filling. Lay down your life. Repent of your sin. Begin fasting in show of your remorse for sin carried on before me, your holy God. I will replenish you, I will lead you to everlasting truth in my ways and my will. Your will will lead you to destruction. It is the broad road my word speaks of come into my will. It is the narrow path, the safe path. I will take you to it. Matthew 7 to 1314 13 Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. 14 Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. 
my word will guide you to the path of light. All other paths lead to everlasting destruction. Come into my light, my will. Give me your life. Let me relieve you of past sin and show you the road that leads you to freedom from the bondage of sin. Psalms 119 to 105. Th Y word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. No matter what, sin keeps you in bondage to it. I can free you, but you must first surrender, repent, and admit you have sin you want to be freed from and do it from a repentant, sincere heart. I will delight in freeing you of this sin bondage that ties and binds you. No matter what holds you prisoner, I can free you. Nothing is impossible for me nothing. I came to set the captives free. You have but to ask. Luke 1 37 For with God nothing shall be impossible. Let me free you of this weight. Let me lift your sorrow and grief. Let me ease your mind and take your burden. Let me prepare you for my coming glory. All this is yours, surrender, put away all your earthly desires and come to me in full surrender. I will give you peace that passes all understanding and you can be made right before my face. I can bring you into right standing with me, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Philippians 4-7 And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through. This love cannot be bought or purchased. It is free free for the taking free for the asking. Hurry though as it has a limited time offer as time is growing closer for my return. Don't delay. The hour is now to wash in my blood and prepare. 1 John 1-7 but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. Let us begin, doubter. Today I want to discuss the hour for those left behind. The hour after the rapture, the world will not be the same. There will great upheavals everywhere. The world will not look the same. Terror will strike the land. My lukewarm children will know what has happened and fear, great fear will strike their hearts. The world will not function normally. The landscape will not even look the same. There will be fires and calamity everywhere. The people will be defenseless as mobs of people will be looking around for people to prey on and rob from. There will be no forces out to help the people as everything will be in chaos. Many will lose their lives as sudden destruction comes to earth. Whole parts of the world will not look the same again as many people will perish at once. 1 Thessalonians 5-3 for when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Panic will set in from all corners of the earth. There will be nowhere to turn for relief. The food will diminish to nothing. There will be desperation everywhere. This will go on for a period of time until the Antichrist steps in and brings the world under his control. At first, it will seem as relief to the people who are frantic to see a form of normal again but the relief he is bringing will bring death to many. Those who refuse to fold into his system will be executed and many even tortured and tormented. Refusing to be part of his system will not be pleasant as he will have no tolerance for anyone. He is evil to the core. He will bring the whole earth under his tyranny. All lands will bend to his control out of desperation to find relief from the chaos left from the rapture. This will be the darkest day known to mankind. Many will kill themselves looking for relief this is not my solution so it is not to be considered as one. The Antichrist will instill the mark of the beast on the people as a means of control. Refusing the mark will bring a sentence of death. There will be no exceptions. Revelation 13 to 1617 And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had a mark, or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Revelation 14 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day or night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Many of my lukewarm followers will then understand the price they must pay to come into my kingdom. So many will not surrender to the Antichrist and so many will die for their faith. It will be a large number. It will not matter how many die to the Antichrist. His lust for power and control will rule over his heart. He will have no concern over the many who lose their lives. It will be a dark day for those who profess my name. My name will bring a death warrant to many. 
My name will be opposed and represent rebellion to the Antichrist system and they will want to eradicate all who promote me and my ways. What a dark hour approaches children. These have been dark hours on earth in the past but never as dark as what lies ahead. This will not be a pleasant place for anyone carrying children. Darkness will reign. This is what my lukewarm church will face. Lukewarm churches will come back to me in large numbers. People will seek me like never before. I will of course be there but they will still have to go through hard times. Families will be separated and sadness will ensue. All this because my children have hardened their hearts and remain stiff-necked to my many warnings. All this could be avoided, if my children would come to me, cry out in humble heart of repentance, seek my face, learn to know me in intimacy. Run into my waiting arms. I will show them the truth about the hour of my soon return and how to be prepared as the bride. Come children. Run, I am waiting to save you from all of this. I am the great rescuer. My desire is to save you. No one needs to be left behind. There is room for all who come and lay their life down before me. I require surrender of your total being and repentance for your sins. Don't be fooled as there is no other way. Let me bring you relief from this coming hour. Let U.S. begin again. My children believe that they have many years into the future. They do not understand that I have lost my tolerance with this world. My children are too caught up in the world to see how far removed the world is from my truth and what I, God represent. Even their churches are far from my words, my truth, my book. The leaders of my flocks are caught up in worldly activities and they do my work to please themselves. They no longer have or pursue a pure love for me. They pursue wealth, fame, credibility from those around them and believe I will bless them. They believe large numbers in their churches equate success and that I am pleased. I am only pleased if my leaders point their children to seeking me first in all their ways and to walk with me in quiet intimacy. Very few are teaching this because it does not tickle the ears of the many they want to draw into their buildings. Many bring money and money makes everyone happy, but my kingdom is not about riches in this life. Luke 16:13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, and love the other, or else he will hold to the one, and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. My leaders are far from me and why not? If they appease large numbers then when is their time for me? I am the reason they exist. I am the one WHO brings the sun and the rain. This is a dark hour and it grows darker each day, yet my leaders cloak this truth from my flocks. They hide it and only bring words of happiness and joy. My flocks are deceived and are not being prepared. They think all is well and they continue on as always. What words of warning would revive them? What must they hear to believe my book has laid out all the truth before them, yet no one hears, no one believes? What must be said for the church to take hold of the warnings and put aside their obsessions with the things of the world and watch and prepare? Hosea 4-6 My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shall be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. They are soft and being misled. Time is getting away and the church remains grossly complacent as if everything is alright. How deluded the lukewarm church is. How lackluster its pursuit for me is and all I represent. If the church really pursued me in intimacy, then none of my warnings would come to them as a surprise and they would be wholeheartedly heeded. This is a great hour of darkness for the churches. Very few are sitting up and taking notice. Very few are walking in my precepts and ways. Grace is not extended to those who willfully live rebelliously, unrepentantly. You can quench and grieve my Holy Spirit and then what do you do, O Church? Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. When you drive my spirit out of your beautiful buildings because he is too extreme for your taste, I and my spirit are one. Who are you worshipping if you have excused my spirit and the move of my spirit from your presence? Just who are you worshipping? You are idol worshipping. Acts 7.51 Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. You have created a God of your own making, a God who suits your worldly likes and desires, but it is not the one true living God. It is merely an idol. You think the people in the past who worshipped golden statues were scandalous you are no different. 
Come to me in humble repentance churches and I will cleanse your souls. I will forgive you for your pursuit of mammon and for getting away from me. I long to bring you back to myself. Let me revive you and bring you peace and make you right with your God. Mark 8 36 For what shall it profit a man, if he shall gain the whole world, and lose his own soul? As it stands, you are far from me and my ways. This I will not bless. Please turn back to me, O lost church. I am still waiting yet a little longer. Delay is not an option. Stand alert and heed this warning. Take action. Many lives are at stake. 2 Timothy 4.34 For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Chapter 9 About the Lost Church Let U.S. Begin This word, I want to talk about my lost church, those who believe they are secure in me but are far from me. I am addressing you now. Many are in churches they believe are giving them the full truth about me and what I stand for but the truth is there are watered down versions of what I stand for in most of the churches around the world. This means they are carrying half truths to the people because the people will not tolerate the whole truth. They do not want to know my full gospel. They want to hear what tickles their ears and placates their desires to be in the world and live worldly lives. The hour is coming for my return and I cannot take my half-hearted, lukewarm believers. They will be left behind. They will know then what their semi-interested faith has done for them. Revelation 3 to 1516 I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now children, you cannot rely on your church leaders to present you with all the truth. You must seek me yourself for all the truth. You must read my book. Surrender to me wholeheartedly and ask to be filled with my spirit from a repentant, humble heart. There is no other way. I want a full commitment. I will exchange your life with a life that is full and abundant and you and your eyes will be open to truth, my truth. Then you will understand what I require to be received into my kingdom. My church has lost sight to what it means to be my follower. They do not follow my precepts and ways. They look for loopholes to do exactly what they want and still feel good about themselves. This has been going on now for a very long time but now it is rampant and very few want the whole truth, very few want to understand what my word really says. They want little stories that make them feel good as they come and go but never really want to know me or who I am. They only think they know me. I am not truly known by most of my followers. Most only dabble in a relationship with me. They do not fully understand what it means to make me their God. I am just a bystander looking in on their life, never really taking part in their life, never really sharing an intimate relationship. Matthew 7 to 2123 Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. This saddens me greatly as this is the true reason I created my children, for intimacy with me, to walk this life's path together. Yet the world so entices them that they have chosen the inferior way than to come and know their maker. How sad to be so intrigued with the creation and to reject the creator, maker of all they are intrigued with. How very sad indeed. My children, you do not see that I require holiness and fidelity. Children, I want to be your first thought, your first love, your first all in all. This is why you were created, to be my companion eternal. If you choose not to walk this road with me now, how can I expect we can be eternal companions? Who do you expect to be eternally tied to dot me or my enemy? You need to ask yourself this question. My love is deeper than any love Manny knows. Do not sell yourself short seeking inferior satisfaction. You will never know a greater love than mine. Children, you need to search your heart and examine your soul. Where do we stand, you and I? Where do I fit in your life? Am I on the outside looking in or do we really have a relationship? Am I the core of your life? Where do you want me to be? You must ask yourself. I wait on you. 
my arms are wide open to bring you into a full-fledged relationship with your Maker, your God. The hour approaches for important decisions to be made. Do you want to be among my bride? She is my all in all. She waits on me and watches for me. I am more than a fleeting fancy for her. I am not someone she calls on intermittently or when she is in need of something. She and I are interlocked. I move, she moves. We blend, we are one. She is in my will and she moves down my narrow path. Our course is aligned. So my children, I leave the choice to you. Although I want you to choose for me, you still have a free will. So I invite you to come into the perfect relationship and purpose you were designed for. The choice is yours. Don't wait too long to choose. The offer will not last forever. Chapter 10 Lust for the World Yes Daughter, we can begin. Susan, this is what I want to talk about today, the sin that rises up in the hearts of many is the sin of lust for the world. All the ways of the world are evil, evil men inspiring evil acts. All that the world does is apart from God. The world is not in my will, so it is not in my will. The world often professes to know me, but it is far from me and my truth. It runs full force in the direction that it willfully wants to go in without ever consulting me, its maker. This is evil. To run outside of my will is evil. The only will that is not evil is my will. Do you not see this my children? How can this world move in the direction of God now when it has gotten so far from WHOIM and what I stand for? I stand for holiness, purity of heart, law and order, truth and morality. This world challenges all my ways and doesn't even come close to what my book sets out as truth and my everlasting way. The world maligns me and my ways every chance it gets and those who follow me. My ways are not respected or revered. If they were, this world would not experience the woes, hardships, disease, and sadness that overwhelms it. My way brings blessings. The world's way brings cursings and cursings abound. Only those who really walk close to my word and me receive the peace and calm that I deliver even in the worst circumstances. This is my bride who follows me without flinching. She knows me. She loves me. She does not get far from me. She knows I am her life source, her power, her love, her strength. Where else can she go to receive this comfort? She knows better than to leave my side for other lovers. I have been tried, tested, and true to her. I am her all in all. No one can take my place in her eyes. The world does not know my love. It has settled for an inferior version of satisfaction. How sad for those who follow after the world and its ways, believing this world system holds all the answers. Soon, this world will lose its last remaining light when I remove my bride from its midst. Once she is out of the picture, the world will then be a very dark, desolate place. There will be nothing to look for that resembles a guiding light of truth and beauty, only gross ugliness and evil will ensue. This is the world soon coming. This is what is about to take place. 2 Thessalonians 2.34 Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except the come of falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who apposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. 2 Thessalonians 2 colon 67 And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. A world that does not live by my laws and precepts is like a ship without rudder. This is a ship that is dead and dying, a sinking ship. Soon children, you will see death and destruction like never before. Because this world has chosen to turn away from its God, its Creator. Don't be fooled. The world cannot continue to exist apart from my truth and my ways. She is a sinking ship. It is time to get off this ship. Are you coming when I call out my faithful ones? Will you come after me or will you stay behind clinging to the false hope that this world holds all your answers? Are you still listening to wolves in sheep's clothing that nothing is wrong and all is well? These wolves who do not really know me, who have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. Are you going to continue to be misled and blinded because you enjoy the world too much? 2 Timothy 3-5 Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. 
come partake of God and discover there is a greater truth, there is a greater peace, there is a greater love. I am he. Chase after me, children. Get to know me. I am worth pursuing. I am worth knowing, devoting time to. I am the one WHO brought you into being. Do you not want to spend eternity with me? There is an alternative. It is a place that all the good of this life that comes from me is missing. Yes, all that is good in this world comes from me. I created it all. Without me, none of the good things that you enjoy so and take for granted, that spring from the heart of God, will you ever experience again. So give this some serious thought. You decide, your eternity with or without God. You choose, you decide. Am I taking you when I come to rescue my bride? This is your choice. But there are prices to be paid. You must step away from your love and pursuit of the world because the world's way is not my way. I will let you come to a decision about the direction you choose. Very few are choosing my way, very few. 1 John 2.15 Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Chapter 11 The world is heading for trouble let you as begin, my daughter. Now I want to talk about the events about to take place. The world is heading for trouble. There are great dark clouds growing all around. Soon, very soon, this world will change. All of it will change overnight once the bride is removed. The world will be become dark as it's ever been with no hope of recovery. Soon my children, this will take place. Begin to prepare for this reality. I am not an exaggerator of truth. My words can be trusted. The hour of these changes are coming now swiftly. The course has been laid out and it cannot be stopped. The world has become wicked and no man, government, or power can stop what is coming. This is the unfolding of revelations and the last days. The hour of my son's return arises. Soon the world will know what has transpired like a thief in the night. There is no stopping this event. It has been foretold and it is now coming to pass, just as my words said it would. 1 Thessalonians 5-2 for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Children, you need to make preparations. Make yourselves ready. Be ready for my soon coming and my son's approach. He comes with his angel armies riding across the sky to retrieve his beloved. This hour is nearly here. Arise O oh faithful ones. Make ready. Prepare for the greatest event in all history, the bridegroom coming for his bride. Come and make ready. All must be prepared. Come and be ready by the blood of the Lamb. Cover yourselves in His blood. It is available. Surrender to His great love. Make Him your beginning and end. We are one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now children, the enemy is making his plans. He is preparing to launch his attack against humanity. All civilization is about to change to be completely undone. I do not want you to be caught unaware. But this great upheaval is about to take place. You need to make yourselves ready. Humanity is about to decline into a state of irreparable madness and evil. Only when my son returns to earth will all of it come to a close only then will the evil be vanquished. 2 Thessalonians 2-8 And then shall that we could be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Soon children, you must come to a conclusion, what will you believe? What will you hold on to, a vanishing earth or my will and my ways? I offer an everlasting kingdom. Don't believe this earth holds any future for you. All is about to fold up very soon. The landscape will forever change. Don't be greedy, clinging to a future that doesn't exist. You are wasting your time. Come to terms with this truth and wake up to it. I am giving you truth. Read my book and march it to what is unfolding now. The similarities are seamless because it is all coming to pass just as I said it would so long ago. This is not coincidence. This is the mighty word of God coming to pass. My word does not falter or fail. My words are solid. I am God Almighty, ever-present truth, unrelenting, all-powerful, unchanging King of Kings, Lord of Lords. My words are unchanging. 1 Peter 1-2425 for all flesh is as grass, 
and all the glory of man is the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and flower thereof falleth away, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Come awake, O you sleepers. Now is the hour to awaken. Be alert. Now is the time. Remove your blinders. Put down the things of the world and pay attention. Midnight approaches. Children, I implore you. Don't be caught off guard. Be ready. Make ready. The hour of the sun's return is at hand.